Good morning, fans, Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Tuesday after the WTI Monday. Today's the 21st of April. WTI went to minus $40 uh, yesterday in the May contract. I don't know what to say. A lot of people have talked about it. Uh, I didn't understand it. I didn't have the trade. I had a feeling something crazy was going to happen in oil. Uh, I couldn't quite use my imagination to uh, figure that we were going to go to minus $40. Um, so, shame. I feel like uh, there was some money to be made off of that. But sometimes you also have to just realize that if you have no edge or alpha or deep knowledge, um, don't beat yourself up, right? Uh, like I'm no famously great crude trader. I didn't really understand that futures could go negative. So anyway, we're moving on. I think the contract's trading positive now. Uh, last I saw it was like a buck and a quarter. It looks like just meaningless bullshit now. Um, as you can see, the June contract's 2138. So we move on. Uh, ES rolled over yesterday. I guess it has to be expected just with the, sort of the craziness. There was also news about North Korea. Kim Jong-un, Kim Jong-un or whatever his name is, uh, in the hospital. Um, We'll see. Lots been denied. Lots been said. I think the main thing is that a lot of us believe is that um, the worst is still ahead of us in all of this. And one of these things, one of these sort of harbingers of the future is the fact that the financial markets are, are, are moderately broken, right? We saw Euro Norway trade up to 14 there was no offer for about two hours one night. You know, this is about two weeks ago. Literally, there was no offer. It was 100 handles wide. This was Norway, right? One of the most stable currencies in the world. Well, ish. Um, and now we see crude go to negative 40 bucks. All of these little events are events that point to bigger problems, I think. Um, systemic problems. Problems that... Uh, make policy makers and government officials lose sleep at night and also you know creates loads of volatility uh, so for this the volatility we can be thankful um, for the problems that la lie ahead of us um, we can go ahead and be a little bit fearful obviously we we welcome the fear in this business um, but I'm a little bit uh, on the negative side, uh, a little bit uh, worried about the uh, coming 12 months ahead of us. So let's just uh, throw that out there. Anyway, currencies, uh, we're looking at yen today. Let's see, uh, dollar yen here, uh, trading down at 50. This is a line that everyone's going to sort of have drawn and we'll be watching. The problem with currencies right now is there's loads of gamma. So Thursday, there's tons of 107s knocking out. In Euro, super crowded now. If you look at the um, the data from from the futures market, people are massively short Euro Swiss, and people are massively long Euro Dollar. That, of course, equals massively short Dollar Swiss. I feel like they're copying Privateer FX or feel like we're deeply part of the herd here. Um, we'll get to the dollar Swiss chart in a second, but let's just say for now, while we're looking at these yen crosses and, and dollar yen, there's gamma here, and that makes things difficult. It makes things less likely, likely to break. It's sort of range tradey and grindy trading versus trapdoor trading. So we expect dollar yen to grind down towards... 107 the figure there will be some you know a group of stop loss entry players at 106.90 um, but you got to be careful 
especially if there's no real news driving it. There will be gamma down at 70 and certainly down at 55. I think there's 2 billion of expiries uh, at 107 the figure, so careful with that. But as we talked about last week, this is happening. So dollar yen, euro yen is now below 60, traded down to 42. Sterling yen below 133.60. The next big important point is 132.50. Uh, dollar yen, euro yen, sterling yen, all turning. Um, let's just call it, for lack of a better term, the yen bus uh, is leaving the station. Uh, I better hop on board. Looks like there's some money to be made long yen this week. Aussie yen also, the chart's not as pretty, um, but we did. We have now printed this point here, 67.50, as you can see from before, it's a bit of a pivot. Now it's one, two, three, four, you know, so four, four, four hourly lows on the daily. It looks like this. It still looks like a quadruple bottom. Um, this just will add to the fire, right? And so core short cross yen looks better than dollar yen. Uh, only because of how crowded the dollar short market is now. So let's go talk about that. So we we talked about it's now quite obvious that everyone is short dollar Swiss. This will prevent dollar Swiss from going down very quickly. Uh, we still do believe in this trade, um, but with this new knowledge of positioning, you just have to amend your the tactical book a little bit, right? So instead of maybe selling here at 97.10, go ahead and wait for 97.55 and 97.85. Um, can we trade above 99? Sure, of course we can. This is FX. Um, so we do like the direction still. We're worried about the number of people who have this position on. Obviously a lot of these people put it on through options. So either these options have to expire worthless or there has to be some pain that's taken. So you want to watch these expiries closely. If you see 10 yards of Euro dollar expiries on the 108 handle, you know we're not really going too far. That means every uh, John, Julie, and Jennifer has this trade on. So we're in patience mode now. We like the direction, but we recognize this new information that we have and so we have to be a bit careful here dollars are same story don't want to get into that sad mopey shit um those guys are fucked dollar cad's a weird one right so the crude move yesterday didn't really move dollar cad too too much and we're kind of right in the middle of nowhere if you're worried about Canadian dollars, which I think you probably should be, um, watch the June contract in crude, right? So we're 21.50. Uh, no big deal. It's low. It's um, But it gets like kind of twitchy if we see June start heading, you know, into the $15 area. This obviously is the May contract. So, I mean, that's the historic bar unbelievable but here's June right it's a different contract uh, so you can't really technically trade it per se but we're 2150 this gets twitchy if we get sort of below let's call it 16 16 bucks so no dog in this fight but if you're worried about Canadian dollars I would say crude below 17 um, is sort of a harbinger of, of trouble uh, S&Ps, we kind of talked about this, you know, we want to be core short S&Ps on the trend book. You want to try and sell high ones on the, um, the day book, the tactical book. And that hasn't changed. BTPs printed to sort of now triple bottom, 135.75. I mean, these should go to 120. But you gotta have some wide, some wide parameters on this, and keep the position very, very small because it's pretty hectic, pretty hysterical, 
I mean, the move from 135.60 to 138.60 in basically one day, one 24-hour period, goes to show you that BTP's um, sort of a crack-addicted form of boons. You know, boons are much more sedate. BTP's not so much. Dollar Norway, we still believe in this trade again because of the because of how crowded this dollar short trade has now gotten quite quickly. You want to be patient. Uh, will we take a peek above 1060s now? Probably. Uh, so your tactical book, you might want to, you know, pick your poison, right? Tactically, you don't want to tactically trade dollar Norway and dollar Swiss. They're kind of the same trade. Dollar Norway is just more volatile. But we do want we do want to be ready or expect to move above 1060, just to screw some people, just to just to be very FX about it all. So uh, be careful of that. Anyway, uh, I've said enough. Yen's the focus today. Uh, dollar yen grinding lower. Euro yen, sterling yen, core short. Um, Aussie yen. We're checking out the 6750 area. Good luck out there today, people. We will uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow.